This is Dental All-Stars, where we bring you the best in dentistry on marketing, management, and training. Here's your host, Alex Nottingham. Welcome to another edition of Dental All-Stars. I'd like to share with you an excerpt of a study club I did with Larry Gazzardo called Using Photography to Increase Treatment Acceptance. Take a listen. Welcome to Study Club. I'm Alex Nottingham, and as always, we have our head instructor, Larry Gazzardo, and we're talking about how to use photography to increase treatment acceptance. And we have some slides here to share, and I'm going to turn it over to none other than the great Larry Gazzardo. It's all you. Wow. Thanks a lot. Alex, you know, uh, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, pictures can describe things that, um, or say things that you could never describe. That, that's why a picture is worth a, a thousand words. And I find that photography really helps in gaining treatment acceptance. It also has a byproduct of allowing you to um, document your progress with patients, and it also helps you communicate better with labs. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to get in the habit of just taking pictures and, and just getting started. So what I want to be able to do tonight is show you pictures that I would take, and then I will demonstrate to you how, how I would use them. I don't like to make things complicated. Anybody who's ever listened to me before knows um, I don't want to make things harder than they already are, and uh, I, I just want to make it very, very simple. So. Photography doesn't take the place of the exam itself. Um, it's a part of the exam. And so every um, new patient, particularly every new patient uh, that comes into your office, part of your exam should include gathering photographs. And everybody always wants to know, well, what pictures do, do I need to take? Um, I've asked around. I've seen lots of places where you can take pictures. Um, um, if you go to Koi, if you go to uh, Spear, Dawson, Panky, if you go to any of those academies, they're all very, very highly regarded, and they all recommend that you take photographs. And I got this set from the folks at the Dawson Academy. Many of you also know that I'm on the visiting faculty there, but they provided me with this set. This is their recommended uh, set of photos, and I know the reason why they asked you to take these photographs for all of your new patients because every photograph here could be used to demonstrate just about any clinical condition that could be happening with the patient. You can also use these to market your practice and you can also use these photographs uh, to communicate with your lab. Now some people will tell you that, wow, this is a lot of pictures uh, to put a new patient through. So I, I tend to agree with them that initially you may not feel like you have to have the whole set. Um, I think even the um, AACD even recommends that you take more, but that's a different situation. But what I would say to you is that you probably want to at least get the full face, get the profile face, uh, get the lips retracted, uh, the full smile, and of course the upper and lower occlusal shots. And so think of it this way. You want to at least get these six pictures to start with because you can use every single one of them to demonstrate what you want to talk to the patient about. And then if you realize as you go to your exam or before you get started that, okay, this is a more complicated case, I'm going to need the rest of the pictures, and you may also have them come in for other diagnostic records, then you can take the other pictures. But I definitely would recommend that you start just by getting these six pictures first. Uh, because that'll be the whole part of your preparation. You, you have to remember, when you do the exam, it's not just for us to gather data. Uh, the exam is for you to discover, along with the patient, problems that the patient has. It's also your time to have a dialogue with the patient, to ask them, you know, how do you feel about what's happening to you? Has anyone ever talked to you about this? You know, were you even aware of what was going on? Think of your exam as a time of engagement with the patient as well. So it's, it's about a lot more than just gathering data. It's really an exchange between you and the patient, and it's also another way for you to connect with them. 
You also have to remember that you're dealing with patients who think they know more than you do, and patients are not going to allow you to make decisions about their care without their input. So the examination itself not only helps them discover what's going on in their mouth, it also gives you an idea of what's important to them, and it allows you to get some input from them to find out, well, how concerned are you about the things that we're discovering? So as you go through your exam, you obviously you'd be taking notes, and when you're through, you're going to review findings with a patient. And so you can review with them. You know, earlier we had talked about how your front teeth were wearing away, you were experiencing frequent headaches, uh, you're not very happy with your smile, you want to be able to maintain your teeth for life, and you certainly don't want to have the same problems that your parents have been experiencing. So you want to just paraphrase back to the patient what the conversation had been like through the examination. It reassures the patient that you understand uh, what they've been going through and that you care about the same things that they care about. So in a nutshell here, uh, what we're hearing, Mr. Jones, is that you want to improve your smile, you want to correct the wear, uh, change the shade, and you want to make it all last. And so you're just reassuring with the patient that, you know, these are the things that we had talked about and this is how you want to be able to move forward. So you started by taking some pictures. And so when we did the examination, we looked at your teeth to see how they fit together. Uh, we looked at their shape, the shade, and uh, we looked at the size of your teeth. And then, of course, we were able to point out that some of your teeth were worn down. Some of them are small uh, and flat. And along with that, some of them were even crooked and, and, and chipped. So, you know, looking at your teeth, what I noticed was that uh, your teeth are worn. And that's due to the fact that your balance, your bite hasn't been balanced. And your teeth don't fit together correctly. So that means that the jaw doesn't seat properly in the joint. And that's what causes your muscles to be hyperactive. And it's contributing to the grinding that you've been doing. And uh, it's also causing those, those frequent headaches that you get late in the afternoon. So what I did here was I just circled for you the teeth that are going to have to be treated so that we could stabilize your bite. Uh, then I indicated with arrows uh, the teeth that should be considered for treatment to correct the shade uh, because they show when you smile. And of course, those could be done at any time. So, um, you know, there's no rush to get those done, but I wanted to be able to point those out. You know, we also looked at how the wear has considerably shortened your teeth and it flattened out the edges and actually it's giving you a smile of somebody who is um, much, much older than, than your chronological age. So uh, it's important that we start to consider doing something uh, to be able to work that out. So as your teeth have gotten shorter, you know, less and less of them shows while you smile. And when your lips are at rest, uh, when you speak, or when you even just open up your mouth. And you can see from these pictures, there is room to make your teeth a little bit longer. And that's where I drew those lines, um, so that we could start to work this out, so that you could see what your teeth actually could begin to look like. So, you know, when your teeth show more, um, your smile appears fuller, brighter. Uh, it makes you look more youthful. And so I definitely can understand the unhappiness that you may feel about your smile right now. Uh, we also discovered that the angle of your teeth distorts symmetry. And so it doesn't allow for a very uniform appearance. And it's more difficult to keep a lot of them clean. And that's going to explain the problem that you're having with your gums. So for the people who are listening, um, you know, you'll, I love it when I get to play doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm not a dentist, uh, but I like working with dentists. And what I'm demonstrating to you here is we're just going through the pictures. Uh, the patient should have already seen these things while you did the exam. And so now we're actually just going through the pictures, but I'm not going through them each one. Now look at this photo. Look at the angle of this tooth. Look how this one is flat. You know, I'm saying that for effect because all too often during a consultation, what we do is we overwhelm the patient with just too much information when a lot of it is very obvious. You know, we talked about the fact that your teeth were worn down. The picture is obvious. They can see that. 
And so if you can imagine yourself in a consultation with a patient, um, everybody has different ways that they like to do things, but I think the photograph should be up on a monitor that are, that's very, very easy to view for the patient. And then I'd also have another set of pictures just printed out. They could be on paper, uh, but that way it could be right in front of the patient. So if they want to actually take a, look, a closer look and bring those photos up to their eyes, you know, they can do that. But what I wanted you to see so far is I took the pictures that we've already taken, and now I'm just describing to the patient, these are the things that you and I talked about, and now these are the things that I noticed as I did my exam. Um, usually I'll find that pictures by themselves work just fine. However, sometimes you do need a biologic model. Sometimes maybe you have to um, uh, have a textbook out or something like that that may have already been, you know, with a bookmark or whatever. So you want to have those things available. You know, like I do like the models that you could peel away the lips and patients could see what you're talking about, you know, underneath the gums. Um, I do like how those models represent very easily, you know, here's the difference between an implant and a bridge, or here's the difference between a crown and a, a veneer, you know, or something like that. And I like them because patients can put those in their hands, you know, they can touch them, they can feel them. So pictures are good, and I, I find that usually the pictures are enough uh, to get your point across, but if you find that you're still struggling with it, then don't forget other visual aids work as well. Uh, and so you can have those uh, present uh, in the room. The point is, is that you want to have them out already. You don't want to have to be fumbling around. You don't want to have to tell your treatment coordinator, hey, could you go run down the hall and, and go pick this up for me? You remember, we want a seamless experience for your patients. So you want to have these things available for them so that uh, you could show it to them as you're talking to the patient. So. Now, after you've showed the patient all the things that were going on in their mouth, then you can start to explain to them how you want to address these issues. And so, again, you can use the same pictures all over again. Um, you know, the first problems that have to be addressed are the condition of your gums. And then we need to provide some relief for your headaches. And then we've got to stop your teeth from wearing down any further. The, the good news here is that you still have plenty of tooth structure to work with, so you can expect a great result in, in each one of those areas. So I'm just showing the, the patient again the, the same photograph that I had already marked. Um, I circled them not only because I wanted the patient to be able to see what I was talking about, I also wanted the patient to start to get an idea in their mind, ooh, he's got like five or six teeth circled up here, and he's got another five or six teeth, you know, circled down there. So, you know, he's talking about a lot of teeth uh, that are going to require some treatment. So you're starting to explain to them, we're going to take care of the wear, we're going to take care of the gum problem, and we're going to take care of those headaches at the, at the same time. And so after we get that completed, we're going to move on to straightening your teeth. And um, we're going to do that so that we can create a uniform look, uh, improve the ability for you to keep them clean, as well as then we're going to lengthen your two front teeth and then the four teeth just below them by contouring the gums. And I just drew a line there so that you can see um, where your teeth are uh, as compared to where they should be. You know, uh, if we lengthen the teeth, it's going to provide more tooth structure for you to be able to work with or for me to be able to work with, and it's going to restore what has worn away. So as we discussed, when more of your teeth show, your smile appears fuller, brighter, and, and you know, you're going to look a lot more youthful because uh, your teeth are just aging faster uh, than you are. And another aspect of lengthening your teeth is that when you do that, you're going to be able to widen them, you know, or I'll be able to widen them. Uh, to be in proper pr proportion. Right now they look square, meaning they're just as wide as they are long, when in reality they should be a little bit longer uh, than they are wider. And so we want them to look less boxy uh, than they do right now. And so by lengthening your teeth, I'll be able to do that for you. Contouring the gums not only is functional, but it'll also give you a less gummy smile. Uh, because the proper amount of gum is going to show when you smile and speak. Um, I have a picture here on the left to show you how the gums should look on your teeth. 
uh, compared to how they do in your mouth. And I drew a line there, and you can see that you've got a lot more gum showing than what's considered uh, ideal. But we'll, we'll, we'll contour the gums to achieve that goal for you. Then I'm going to balance your bite so that your teeth fit together correctly and rest on top of each other with equal pressure. Uh, this is what's going to prevent further wear. It will increase the comfort you know, that you're, you're having, and it'll assure that the treatment's going to last long. So again, for those of you who are listening, I hope what you're hearing is that I'm talking in very plain lay terms. Um, I'm actually letting the pictures themselves um, speak a lot for me. But patients can see, you're right, I've got a lot of gum showing. My teeth are very small. They don't look at all like what's considered ideal. Matter of fact, I like the ideal picture. And I'm glad that you noticed, doctor, um, you know, that uh, you're going to be able to correct these problems. So I think when you're through, you would provide your patient with a treatment uh, summary letter. Um, explaining to them all the things that you had talked to them about, as well as I would provide them with a sheet with all of their photos. You know, they can all be placed on there. And so it's a good way to drive your whole point home uh, with the patient. I think that when patients come in uh, for a hygiene or a restorative appointment, um, I would have your screen, your monitor there for every patient to see, and um, I would have it set up in quadrants. And the way I would break down those quadrants is show them that, hey, this is what we completed last time. And then in the lower uh, left quadrant, you know, this is what we're going to restore today. So when the patient comes in, they're taking a look at treatment that you've already performed for them. And then they're looking at a picture of what you're going to do today. And if, if what I'm showing you is making any sense, you can see it creates a, a little before and after for the patient to go, oh yeah, I can't wait for you to get this done because you know I want it to look as good as the one that you did before. When you're finished in the upper right quadrant, then I would put in a picture of what got completed today because after every patient appointment, you should be explaining to patients, hey, this is what we did for you today and show it to them. So put a picture there and then take one of your other previous pictures and put it in the lower right quadrant and show them, now this is what we'll complete at your next visit. So what you have here is when patients come in, instead of having them watch movies or something on TV that just reminds them of other things they'd rather be spending their money on, um, I would have them paying attention to their own teeth. And so it's a simple, just break it up in quadrants. This is what we completed last time. This is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, then this is what we completed today, and then I'd pop in a picture, this is what we'll complete at your next visit. And again, what I'm demonstrating for the patient is, yeah, I want to get that done because I want these teeth to look just as good as the ones we did last time and the ones that we, we did today. And so I would have these quadrant pictures up there, every hygiene visit, every restorative appointment, um, I would want to have those there. I would also make sure that if there's any incomplete treatment that the patient has on their treatment plan, that there's a photograph of that as well. And so I want to be able to put those pictures on display for the patient to see at any given time. I would also recommend that you have a set of pictures of treatment in different, I'm not treatment, but conditions in different phases of, of you know, their condition. So in this case, I'm looking at some wear, earlier wear, some more moderate wear, and then some very severe wear. I would also have a series of pictures like this from patients of different ages. So for instance, um, have wear from a patient who's 30 years old and then another one in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and 80s. Uh, the tendency is, let's say for instance, if we use this example, you're talking about wear, and um, is to tell the patient, wow, you know, you've got wear in your teeth and I hate for something like this to happen to you. And so, you know, if you've got a 30-year-old in your chair and you bring up a picture of somebody who's in their 80s and you say, you know, conditions like yours turn into problems like this when you're 80 and we'd like to see you be able to avoid it if all possible. Well, you know, a 30-year-old thinks, well, gosh, I've got 50 years, you know, before something like that happens. So I, I think I'll just put this off. So we don't want to go from 30 to 50. That's why I want you to have a series of pictures of people in different ages 
So that way, if you have a 30-year-old in your chair who has some wear that should be treated now, you know, let's pull out a picture of somebody in their 40s. And so that way you could pull that picture up and say, you know, so-and-so, you've, you, you've got this wear in your teeth. Um, what we know about wear is that this will continue uh, until there's nothing left. And I, I want to show you the, the picture of another patient that I've treated who was just in their 40s, you know, not that much older than you were. But look what happened to them because they waited from where you are uh, until they got to this point. And so, you know, I hated that this happened because this patient required so much more treatment than would be necessary if we just took care of it right now. So what I am recommending as you're using pictures to gain treatment acceptance is Every condition that is in their mouth uh, that hasn't been treated, there definitely should be a picture of that. And then I would also have a series of pictures from other patients uh, that you've gathered, but I'd have other uh, pictures of different conditions in different phases of it, like periodontal disease as it went from gingivitis to something very, very se severe. Same thing for wear. Same thing for crack teeth. You know, here's a picture of a tooth that's cracked, but here's one where they waited until something happened, and now it broke off the whole cusp. And so we've got a much, much bigger problem. So I'd like clients to put those pictures in a separate folder. We just kind of call it patient condition photos. And so that way it's very easy for us to go through it and pick out the photos that, you know, that we're looking for. Um, other pictures that I'd like you to have um, on board is definitely for your uh, marketing. And again, nothing promotes your treatment better than pictures of treatment that you you've already uh, treatment that you've already done. And so, I would recommend that after every single restorative visit that you have, that you get a picture of what you did. Thanks so much to our guests, and thank you for listening. I'd like to invite you to join us for a powerful, no-cost online training event called Dental Practice Excellence where we will explore three critical areas of the dental practice and how excellence can lead to long-lasting success. I have some startling statistics you need to be aware of. The average practice easily fails to convert 87 missed call opportunities per month. Now, whether it's a missed call or your team couldn't answer the insurance question or handle price shoppers or couldn't build enough rapport on the phone. Thousands of dollars of potential revenue is being lost on each missed opportunity. Even if your office misses only one phone opportunity per day, when combined with broken appointments and the cost of employee turnover, you are losing $200,000 per month minimum, a quarter million a year lost due to just a few activities that can be improved with an emphasis on customer service. To make the problem worse, 97% of dentists train their team less than once a year on these customer service skills. And when I ask dentists that they should be training, they say to me, yes. And then I ask, well, why don't you do it? They go, I don't know. Join us for a limited time, no cost online training event, Dental Practice Excellence is go to allstardentalpractice.com to register. You will learn in this webinar how to uncover hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue with just two basic skill sets, how to reduce employee turnover by 25%, motivate team members, become 400% more productive, and ultimately have your business work for you. We'll also provide step-by-step -step verbiage on how to reduce or eliminate broken appointments, where how do we handle the toughest questions on the phone, and how to do this without manipulation, scare tactics, or dishonesty. So register today at allstardentalpractice.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Dental All-Stars. Visit us online at allstardentalacademy.com.